Ian, I, I think we can all expect, you know, Brunson to be the constant, to, to be the workhorse for the Knicks. Who, who's your X factor here in the playoffs? I'm going to say DiVincenzo, Dante DiVincenzo. I mm. think things can swing on his shooting. Um, and, you know, when Jalen Brunson gets trapped, uh, when the second defender comes at Jalen Brunson, if Dante DiVincenzo finds a place and space to be open, he's going to need to knock those shots down for the Knicks to have success. Yeah, so I go there. Um, and I, I think Bojan Bogdanovic in a, in a small, small way because – if he comes off the bench and he's hitting shots, which he seemed to be trending in the right direction towards the end of the regular season, if he can give you some minutes where he's giving you offense, that changes the complexion of this team. And I think with no Randall, they're going to be looking for something there off the bench from Bogdanovich. If he can provide it, I think it takes the Knicks to another level. Big time. Fred, how about you? I'm going to say Mitchell Robinson. Mm. More. There is no... There is no greater disparity on the Knicks right now than than for, for any individual player in terms of the way that the player is playing right now versus the way we know that player is capable of playing when he's at his best. And Mitch was playing great basketball when he got hurt in December. And right now, it's not his fault. He had an ankle injury. He couldn't run. He couldn't do all that stuff. He talks about it all the time. He's not as well conditioned as he wants to be. And he's not performing like the Mitchell Robinson who we saw in the beginning part of the season. And the most likely scenario right now is they play Philadelphia in the first round. And there is going to be some game, no matter how well Isaiah Hartenstein plays in the first round, there is going to be some game, if not multiple, where Joel Embiid is going off yeah. or where Joel Embiid gets Isaiah Hartenstein in foul trouble. Early. And the Knicks are going to need Mitchell Robinson to step up in those moments. They're going to need him to keep Embiid off the glass. They're going to need it to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to need him just to guard him well enough to where they don't feel like they have to frantically double team and beat every single time, which is going to send the rest of their defense into a scramble. And if Mitch can do that, he doesn't have to be what he was during the first part of the season. And I don't expect him to be, but if he can look like he has kind of in his best moments over these last few weeks, which there have been flashes, then I think all of a sudden the Knicks are in really good shape. Cause now you got 48 minutes of top notch defense at center and if that's the case, the Knicks are actually one of the best teams in the league, one of the best equipped teams in the league to guard Joel Embiid. So I, I would say Mitchell Robinson, because if they can get something good out of him, then that would just be huge. I just want to add quickly, yep. I mean, if you get Miami, it's kind of the same thing with Bam Adebayo, who had a great series yeah. against New York last year. So yeah. they would have their hands full there. Oh, Embiid, I think, presents different challenges, more challenges, but Adebayo is pretty good. And Steph, how about you, man? Um, I'll go with Josh Hart. Uh, we know he's going to yeah. play a ton of minutes. I think last year, I think a big difference between the series that they won against Cleveland and the series that they lost in Miami is Josh Hart did not play well against Miami, and he was tremendous against Cleveland. Uh, we all know his shot is up and down. Uh, he's found different ways to impact the game, as, especially this season, which is, I think, is the best season of his career. Uh, but that shot... You know, he's going to have himself some open opportunities throughout this series, and he's going to have to knock the, knock them down. And so I'm, I'm picking him as my X factor. Yeah, I, I got to go with Hart as well, uh, just for, you know, the amount of workload that he's going to have to have to compensate for the loss of Julius Randle. Rebounding, maintaining the rebounding edge, especially if you go against Philadelphia. They can match the Knicks in terms of their front court size and their physicality. So he's going to have to be out there getting on the boards. I think it's important for them to actually find easy baskets. You're not going to get a lot of transition opportunities in the postseason, but if you can, Josh Hart has to lead that break. Get them easy baskets at the hoop because – I sometimes am fearful that this team is going to be too jump shot reliant. And when you play teams like even Miami, even when they struggle for offense, they've been one of the top 10 interior defenses for like the last 10 years. So mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to get inside on them. And I think Josh Hart is going to have to be one of those guys because you don't have that force that can get to the rim, draw contact and get to the free throw line and get you some easy buckets. So Josh Hart from a rebounding, playmaking and scoring, I think he's going to be vital for these guys.